Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to my channel for another Hot Toys Diecast Iron Man 1 6 scale figure unboxing and review. Today we're taking a look at the suit up version of Silver Centurion from Iron Man 3. A pretty peculiar choice for a new Diecast Iron Man figure when Hot Toys announced Silver Centurion and Diecast in the same sentence. This wasn't exactly what I had in mind. Now, I got mine from ToysWonderland.com. Link for that is in the description below. They do have a pay in four option and a loyalty program. While you're down there, why not hit that subscribe, bell notification icon, and join button so you're notified as soon as a brand new review goes live on the channel. As for the box art, there is no denying this image. Freaking sick. We've got the Silver Centurion about to close up over Tony. And before it does, you can see all of the internal workings. A ton of LEDs plus a super bright lens flare for the arc reactor. Down below, Silver Centurion armor suit up version and die cast. I am curious to find out how much of this guy is die cast though. Then for the overall finish of the front cover, it is metallic. So when the light hits it, looks stunning. On the side of the box, the rest of that image of Silver Centurion spilling over the edge, you can see more internal workings and the signature blades. Don't forget Silver Centurion in the film, he was cutting off limbs left, right and center. Silver Centurion and diecast down below. We can also get a sneak preview of a couple of other suits. Bones, I'm fairly certain that is, and the Mark IX. I know, he only cut off one arm. Still, it would have been awesome to see him wrecking shop in the Silver Centurion suit. We didn't get to see the suit nearly enough in the film. Then, another suit from the House Party Protocol, Shotgun. Jarvis's line, the House Party Protocol, sir. Of course, warnings and legal info. Just like traditional die-cast Iron Man figures nowadays, instead of splitting open like they did back in the day, you slide them out from the side. Or, through the magic of video editing, a snap transition. On the lid of the foam core, we do have Silver Centurion armor suit-up version, and yes, that is his full and undoctored official name. What a mouthful. I've never seen this guy in person before. I've never held him. I have no idea what to expect. This is an all new thing from Hot Toys. First in-hand impressions, lifting him out of the packaging. He's heavier than I was expecting. What we are going to do now though, is get all of his accessories laid out in the light box and take a closer look at everything he comes with. I know what you're thinking. Wow, that's a lot of accessories. There are so many little parts and pieces. There are. But also, they kind of aren't. Most of these accessories, they're not accessories at all. They're actually part of the armor itself. On the right, we have all of the die-cast pieces, or pieces that contain die-cast ones. And on the left, all of the plastic ones. Starting off with the display base first. Oh no, it's the dreaded diamond-style display base. I really loathe this style of base. Hot Toys, retire this darn thing. It truly is terrible. On top, we have the arc reactor. It does kind of look misaligned on mine, like the circular piece is slightly off to the side. We have this lens flare done in this high gloss, Iron Man 3, around the front, Silver Centurion, and up top, a dynamic flight pole with a waist clamp. Why is this here? I don't think anyone is going to be displaying this guy midair in a flight pose. You watch, I'll have offended that one guy, that one person out there who's screaming saying, I'm going to display him in a flight pose, how dare you? I'm sorry, one guy. As for the armor pieces, I don't want to discuss them all here and now. We'll just discuss this one. I like the little greebly sections done in metal. In fact, this entire piece is done in metal. We've got some moving parts and pieces, the paint is stunning, and we also have some washers in the crevices just to bring out all that sculpted detail. I wouldn't have minded some weathering on these silver pieces, however. They look a touch too clean. I get it, they're internal workings. They don't need to be dirty, and I don't mean battle damage, I just mean some more detail. Like these blades, for instance. They've got some airbrush shading on the tips and at the bottom, so they don't just look like plain, boring silver metal. 
there is texture to them and they're more believable. We've got some serrations down below. They are prickly. They do slot into the gloves. We will discuss this all later on. When it comes to head sculpts, we have two options. One that's not really a head sculpt at all because it's empty. You can close up the faceplate though and then technically, okay, it's a head sculpt. It's a fully sealed Iron Man helmet. Then the other, Tony Stark inside the suit. The likeness to RDJ on point and that's to nobody's surprise I'm sure. This is far from the first time we've seen this particular head sculpt. In fact, we also got it with the original Silver Centurion. This time though, the paint apps are better. The skin texture, the complexion, that glossy wet blood, oh it looks so real. The best part is, if you have the original Silver Centurion, you can pop this head sculpt off the neck and it is compatible with the neck on that original figure. So if you wanted to upgrade it, pop this head sculpt on, you can. See? I told you, it just pops right on. By the way, this faceplate with the dirt and grime on the surface and the translucent lenses with the sculpted detail on the inside, this one doesn't close. Do not try and close it over the Tony Stark head sculpt. It's simply not going to work. Lastly, some hands. We get some articulated finger hands done in black and gold for some reason. The hand armor is quite long. It sticks out past the hand itself. Then for the repulsor blasting hands, it is significantly shorter because if you think about it, it does have to angle up to actually do the repulsor blast. For both sets of hands, we do have translucent repulsor sections. What we are going to do now though is get Silver Centurion himself out here. Standing straight up and down in the light box, no crazy poses, not that he could pull them off anyway, accessories or anything like that. When this guy was announced, I had two initial reactions. The first one is, wow, that's interesting. And the second was, hang on, who is this actually for? Now that I have him in hand, I can tell you who it's for. Certainly not me, certainly not for most diecast Iron Man collectors, certainly not for fans of Silver Centurion, it's for die-hard Iron Man collectors who love movie moments. The same collectors who loved the Suit Up Mark V. I happen to be one of them because that one came with a racing suit Tony. I'd been asking for that for years. This one doesn't come with anything like that. Limited articulation. You cannot close up the suit panels to have a full die-cast Mark 33 Silver Centurion. And not a ton of accessories. The only saving grace here is there is a lot to look at. Detail galore. Plus the USB light up feature. Something that I kinda wish they would integrate into more Iron Man figures. At the end of the day, even though we are early on in the video, this guy just may not be for you. He is not going to be for everyone. Up close and personal, kicking things off with Iron Man's helmet. The empty one. With the faceplate down and his LEDs turned on. The sculpt is there, it's sharp, and it looks like the Centurion. The silver and red, beautiful colour combo. That silver metallic, Hot Toys, you have mastered a silver metallic paint app at this point. It looks like metal. There's a flake to it, there's this luster and shine to it, and we have some washers in the sculpted in line work, just to bring out all of that gorgeous detail. The Hot Rod Red, nice and saturated and rich, again, with a flake to it and a gloss. You can open up the faceplate if you so choose and pop it on the top of the helmet. There's a magnet up on the top there. Then on the inside, an LED. It's actually that very LED that lights up the eyes when you close up the faceplate. Unfortunately, it does take those mini button cell batteries down below and you have to turn it on separately to the main body. So it does die relatively quickly. It does have an auxiliary function though. When you lift up the faceplate, that LED shines down onto all the sculpted detail inside the helmet. You can see it a lot better in person than you can on camera. This is a suit up figure by design. I think that the Tony Stark head sculpt is more fitting. To suit someone up, you actually need someone inside. The neck is a little bit longer on this head sculpt because there's a double ball peg rather than the helmet being fused to the neck itself. And that's why this one looks a little bit more in proportion. That other helmeted head sculpt sits a touch low for my liking. Kind of makes him look like an American footballer with all that big chunky armor on. You do have some LEDs inside the collar so it shines through, highlighting all that sculpted detail on the neck. And you can close the faceplate up if you want to. 
Not this faceplate though, the one with the translucent eyes, that's just meant to go on top or have him hold it. Whereas the other faceplate that you just saw in the light up helmet, that's the one that can close up. Do be careful, because when you look at the side profile, his nose does stick out mighty far. So popping this on, I am worried that the faceplate is going to scratch up his nose. I hope that it's a non-issue, because this Tony Stark head sculpt, chef's kiss. It looks just like him. And that sort of sweaty, glossy look, it makes sense. He's mid-battle, he's battle damaged, and he's trying to run and jump into these suits as fast as he can. So a little bit of sweat and gloss, that works for me. I do currently have all of the magnetic panels on. We will, after we've discussed him as he is now, take them all off and look at him in a more bare bones state. You can open up these flaps around the back, they hinge up, then out, and the side ones, they simply hinge out. We do have a lot of sculpted detail underneath the flaps and also underneath the flaps, actually sculpted to the roof of them. Then for the small ones, some super thin pieces of metal with that grill detail actually drilled in. There are also more LEDs, more gold paint, and so much silver and black. The inner workings of the Silver Centurion I never knew actually looked like this. Now seeing it in hand in 1-6 scale, it's a sight to behold. Am I starting to be won over by this guy? I think I might be. Initially, I was really skeptical. I had no idea why this thing even existed. Now that I'm seeing it and experiencing it in hand, being able to take off the panels and customize it and open parts and pieces to reveal hidden detail that you'd normally never know was actually there, those things make me happy. They just add to the enjoyment. Now for these side panels, you do have some moving parts and pieces, although they are just pegged in. So if you move these pieces too aggressively, the entire panel will come off. That's kind of par for the course with this guy. A lot of these panels, they will just spring off when you're trying to move him, when you're trying to articulate him. It can be frustrating. I would suggest dialing in a pose first, if you can even pull off that pose, then popping everything back on that's fallen off during the course of posing. This chest plate sticks out really far, so it's on a separate plane, adding a lot of depth. There's more sculpted in detail for the armor underneath, a shitload of blue light coursing through the entire figure. And don't forget, it's plugged in with USB, so all of these lights, they're on permanently. As long as you have power going and as long as these LEDs don't die, it's going to be lit up in the display like a Christmas tree. The arms are cool. These panels splay out, then these ones are removable. The gauntlets have more detail and I'm really running out of adjectives to describe how the LEDs look. There's just a lot of them. Coming down to the legs, what's this? A USB cable? You already know it is. You simply plug it in, it's micro USB. I would have preferred USB-C. This is 2023 Hot Toys. Micro USB is still a current connector for now. If you do want to enable the LEDs, there's a little switch. You flick the switch and they turn on throughout the entire figure except the helmet. Remember? little button cell batteries. His thigh is chonky, this piece sticks out really far, and there's this super thin metal panel with the holes drilled in so it looks like a grill. More LEDs, this piece is die cast metal. So are these two. These pieces that stick out, they are cold to the touch, meaning both of them, they're die cast, so he feels really nice and heavy and planted in the display. With this cable being on his foot, great place, it just will drape over the display base and hopefully blend in with the black of the edge of the display base itself. So I'm hoping it won't be as noticeable as if the cable was plugged into his back, like the 2020 suit Miles. I am a man of my word, so as promised, let's break down the suit to as bare bones as it can possibly be. The first thing you want to do on both sides is remove this panel on the gauntlets. They are both pegged in and they're held in place with magnets. Next up, this one's easy, remove this panel. There are pegs, however, it's mostly held on with the magnets. The pegs, they're just kind of there to guide it. 
The panels that have mirror opposites are marked on the inside, so if you're wondering where they go, look for the L or the R, that will tell you. For his thighs, on the inside, these panels are removable. They are metal, they are held on with pegs and magnets. Around the back, these panels will come off, the silver parts on both sides. Down here, hiding the USB cable and light switch, these panels can remove. And when you take them off, yes, that USB cable and the light switch, they are far more visible but also far more accessible. One last thing I promise, you can open up these panels on the front of his thighs. Voila, the Mark 33 Silver Centurion as disassembled as he can possibly be. I did forget to mention a few things earlier, namely these flaps, which you can open up and close. They're just on mini hinges. There's sculpted detail on the base and also up on top for the lid itself. Then the paint applications. It's glossy, it's shiny, there is some battle damage, just some subtle scratches and some airbrush shading on the surface. Not overdone, not crazy, it is there. You do have some LEDs for the repulsors, they're just in the ball joints for the wrist peg. Not super useful for me. I'm going to have him suiting up rather than blasting people with his repulsors mid-suit up. For his legs around the back, you've got pistons, you've got greeblies, there is just so much sculpt work here. The paint applications, very sharp. Shiny silver, some of that dark gold, and a lot of black. Plus translucent blue plastic. I'm not sure how much I love the translucent blue. This is all supposed to be metal. I get it, there is mesh going on and the light would pass through. In sculpted plastic, it doesn't really come across that way. It just looks like the armor itself is translucent. It is the small details that grab my attention, like these flare canisters being multiple separate pieces stacked on top of one another. So when this opens, it now makes sense. There is a reason why these things extend out. They house these internal workings. Is it just me, or does this look like bones? I understand why they would try and make it look like Bones. Maybe Bones was like a prototype suit and he built all of the other House Party Protocol suits on top of Bones. I've never really heard that. So seeing this for the first time being black and gold rather than red or just straight up silver, it did throw me. If you know why it looks like this, weigh in down below. It's happening, the moment that I'm sure a lot of you have been waiting for. For a quick side-by-side -side comparison, on the left, the suit-up Silver Centurion, and on the right, Silver Centurion from Iron Man 3. The one on the right, he's an actual figure. He can pose, he also comes with a Tony Stark head sculpt, he also lights up, nowhere near as much as the suit-up one, comes with the die-cast blades, but can pose. He has proper articulation. He's a lot sleeker, he's painted almost as well as and it just captures the look of Silver Centurion better, in my opinion. This suit, it's iconic. It goes way back in the comics. So, if you're sitting here thinking, do I sell my plastic one and upgrade to the armor suit up one? I have a question for you. Is it actually an upgrade? You're going for a fully completed Iron Man suit to a figure that captures a split second look between Tony being just himself and being in the Silver Centurion. It's a very niche offering. He is taller, the paint is slightly better, and he's got die cast. Plus the LEDs. I don't think that's enough though to say that he's superior to the original. Going over articulation, this is the segment I have been dreading. If stuff falls off while I'm trying to move the joints, oh well, there's not much I can do. A lot of these panels, they're either pegged in position or magnetized on. Not super securely, I might add. Starting off with the head sculpt, there's a magnet at the bottom, and for the Tony Stark head sculpt, a double ball peg underneath. For the empty helmet, it's just the magnet. Looking forward to there, looking up to there, swivel and pivot side to side. The arms will go up to there, probably a little bit further if you're willing to push it. They will go forward and back, butterfly joint at the shoulder that hinges up and down. Swivel at the bicep, double bend at the elbow, going to about 90. For the wrist peg, a ball joint. The torso has limited articulation. Crunching forward a touch, swivel and pivot side to side. The legs will go forward to there, kinda. They will go out to there, there's a lot of collision going on, swivel at the upper thigh, 
double bend at the knee on ratchets, going to almost 90. Then for the ankle, it does go forward and back, swivel and pivot. Plus, there's a little bit of toe articulation as well. Moving on to the three cool and three annoying things. The first annoying thing is that the entire figure is powered by USB. Except the head sculpt. Hot Toys, we literally just saw you use contact pins to transfer power between the faceplate and the helmet of Infinity Ultron. You could have used that same tech here. That way you could have completely done away with button cell batteries, have the entire thing be powered by USB. As it stands, you have to plug it in, flick the switch underneath this panel to light up the figure, then take off the head sculpt, flick a separate switch, then you can stand back and admire the lights. The second annoying thing, what even is this? I get it, the scene where Tony's putting on the suit for the first time, it is cool and undeniably so in 1-6 scale as well. How many people would have preferred just a regular die-cast silver centurion though? I know I would have. The third annoying thing is this display base. Hot Toys, you are definitely taking the piss with this display base. It's way too big, there are points at every corner so you can't have figures butted up against it, nor can you have it butted up against the back of your cabinet, and there's a dynamic flight pole. You'll damn well know this guy isn't going to be in flight poses, he can barely pose to begin with. They could have gone with a much smaller display base or integrated the USB technology into the base itself. You plug it in and using magnets and copper coils, transfer the power into the figure. That way you don't have a USB cable dangling out of his foot. The first cool thing, I'm prepared for you to call me a hypocrite. It's the USB cable dangling out of his foot. There is something magical about a single USB cable and one switch that lights up almost the entire figure. And doing it this way, having just that single cable, you can have more LEDs. He can be on permanently in the display and they're not going to dim down over time. The second cool thing is all of the detail just hiding under these panels, waiting to be discovered. You can open up a lot of panels, you can remove a lot of them. There's sculpt work, there's paint applications and LEDs. The third cool thing is almost a follow on from the second one. It's how customizable he is. You can have him like this, like the suit is about to close up, or you can remove panels. You can mix and match. You can pretty much have him displayed however you want him to be. Wrapping up on Iron Man 3's Silver Centurion, the armor suit up version. Oh, I don't know what to say. I like him, but I don't like him. I don't really know what this guy means for Hot Toys. Are they going to make more like this? Is this a one-off? If it's a special edition, that's fine. Okay, just experiment. Give it a go. Having figures with super limited articulation, yet a lot of structure and detail with the panels that are meant to just represent one split second from a suit-up scene, I can't say that I want more of them in the collection. I'm allowing the Mark V suit up because that comes with a racing suit Tony like I said earlier. If this came with a Tony Stark figure you could remove from the armor, alright, then we're talking about something completely different. You have to want a figure that can't pose, that has to be plugged in all the time to have the LEDs turned on, and that doesn't come with a lot of accessories, and that doesn't actually look like Silver Centurion to want this guy. He has Silver Centurion elements, like the shoulder pads and the colour scheme, but the size and the proportions with all the panels sticking out, it ruins the actual look of the Silver Centurion, which is otherwise a very sleek suit of armour. I'm not saying he's terrible, truly I'm not. There are collectors that are going to love this. Just because of all that detail underneath the surface of the panels that do add a lot of depth, oh. You could be staring at this thing for hours and moving little parts and pieces that you never actually knew moved when you took him out of the packaging. And if this guy speaks to you, I am so happy for you. Go ahead and get him. I would have preferred just a normal die-cast Silver Centurion. Hopefully, even if this guy doesn't sell super well, it doesn't ruin the chances of us getting that real Silver Centurion. I got mine from ToysWonderland.com. Link for that is in the description below. They have pay in for and a loyalty program. While you're down there, why not hit that subscribe, bell notification icon and join button. If you like the sound of seeing your name in the end credits of my reviews. Like, comment and subscribe and we'll catch you in the next video.